but they do pick up the jug for Picasso here. So they're really waiting on the Pepita hero. And again, I will say that a lot of the times when I see Infamous doing well, it's because Pepita's on a playmaking hero. He's on mm -hmm. something like an axe or a centaur or, you know, anything that's able to have really large impact. His Enigma play is fantastic, too. Uh, not really a popular hero that you see often. And I don't think that we'll be seeing it this time around. But I wouldn't, I wouldn't mind an axe. You want to see an axe? All right. An axe. All right. Interesting. Interesting. Uh, you have a decent initiator in the form of Axe, but I think you need somebody that sits in front a little bit better. You know, I would have liked to say something like Mars. Unfortunately, I can't say that because it's banned out. Uh, Underlord isn't awful. Uh, you know, Moxie, uh, Tidehunter? How many melee heroes are we playing against here? You got three One, right two, now. three. Tidehunter looks decent. Tidehunter yeah. wouldn't be bad either. I mean, that's definitely a playmaking hero that's going to give them some team fight. A little bit of Chonky Boy up front, too. But, mm -hmm. uh... I don't know. I'm not sure here. Maybe not the Beastmaster. Beastmaster is also very good. Does PETA play much Tidehunter? You are my SA Dota expert. He plays Tidehunter, of course. Much Tidehunter. You know, is he a sick, nasty Tidehunter I mean, he's not... I don't know if he's a sick, nasty Tidehunter player. I know he's played it. I know it's uh, something that, you know, they've picked up in the past for him. But I don't know. This is a guy that's like, you know what I want to do? I woke up this morning. I rolled out of bed. I had myself some breakfast. And I thought to myself, I'm going to play some Tidehunter. I don't. He's not like that kind of a person. I see. As far as I know. I could be wrong. Ten seconds mm -hmm. Well, in this match against Team Brazil on the 25th, look at me. I've got the stats right here, everybody. <laughs> Get ready for me to run these numbers. He played... A tide hunter game, and he won. A tide hunter game, and he won. <laughs> yeah, Thanks, you're Neff. welcome, everybody. Stats man, Neff. We're gonna call him Neff Two Scoops Neffington from now on here. <laughs> <laughs> Got all the answers for me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what's the pick up here on No Pango? Because they need a Pingu hero, right? They're mm -hmm. most likely going to have the Lena as a four. Uh, Slardar is gonna be placed over for Luki. and they've already banned. Out I feel like Winter Wyvern's super good for sure. So it's also a BKB piece there. Um, Crystal Main is just something that's nice to have on that team, especially when you consider that little bit of mana regen, but. Yeah. Uh, yeah, the, the BKB piercing is pretty nice, along with, you know, being able to reset fights uh, is pretty important, too. It also allows you to set up, like, for some very big chronospheres, so the ring crushes, you know, uh, anything where supports like sitting somewhere by himself you try to gank him or you go on like uh slardar uh being able to turn the fight and, like getting your allies exactly where they need to be is super big i've seen some very sick games where uh they were running winter wyvern in the qualifiers on no pangolier uh, back when they were plasma and they turned fights in amazing ways so they probably did a little bit of their research here on infamous you know they they fight but they also study they're cool nerds 10 seconds remaining just like me smile no <laughs> no comment uh all right so the final pickup here i still think i don't mm, i don't know with the lich i do love that pickup i feel like that's a, a good hero to be paired up with the baseless void if you play it right you should pretty much be immortal honestly uh during the laning phase because you do have that frost shield you've got a way to kind of disengage to um and you trade fairly well with the uh the blast but I don't know. I'm not sure because I like the axe earlier, but now I guess it's still decent because you're able to just go and creep skip if you want to. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But you're also very closely grouped up if you go in for the call. I don't. Mm. Ooh, that's interesting. I I think it's cool, but I don't like it that much. You know, you got no one to stand in fright, uh, front and start these fights. I used to be a strong believer that the role of tank doesn't really exist in Dota 2. But, you know, with the way that the game is in 2020, you know, you have your Lotus Orbs, uh, your Force Staffs, your Glimmer Capes, etc. Uh, heroes uh, do a little, or they're a bit tankier than they used to be back when I was really good at the game. Uh, you know, you suddenly need someone to dangle. You know, shout out to BSJ coming up with a dangler term, man. He's not wrong on that one. 
excellent way to explain it. Uh, you know, have somebody set up calls for X, have them set up like turnarounds or a good omni slash for the juggernaut, bait them out. Uh, Silencer obviously doesn't fill that role, and they have nobody who can stand in front of a tower, stop seconds, early aggression, or push. I feel like a chronosphere is going to absolutely decimate this team. It's going to be super easy to land it. It's very easy to jump onto the back line and whatnot here. They're too squishy. Exactly. They're too squishy. They're too squishy. I mean, let's let's say, all right, everybody knows my feelings on Silencer. I think he's a garbage hero and he's blah, 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 blah. Uh, and I know that we've been seeing more of this offlane Silencer since Seb has been playing it. But you look at the lineup coming out from No Pango, and it's just so easy to blow up these heroes. I guess the one, oh, because even that, you're still going to be able to hold Faker down pretty well, right? You've got the Slithering Crush, you've got the LSA, you've got Chains coming out from Stars, you've got a Chronosphere, you've even got the, the Sinister Gaze coming out from Lich. I, mm, this is a scary game for Infamous. And, you know, I definitely think Infamous is the favored ones going into this, but I'm not sure if this draft is going to work with what Pango has going on. Mm hmm. Yeah, you know, uh, I'm going to have to agree with you on that one. And the, a lot of the teams, they've been saying, you know what, they're an open qualifier. They've lost a lot of their matches so far. You know, they were going to lose to Beast Coast anyways yesterday when they were forced to do a forfeiture. Uh, but they took a game off of Cat Jammers today, formerly crazy. That was the number two spot in the last NA tournament. These guys are actually pretty good. They showed incredible restraint and teamfight ability in those games as well. So, you know, this team... Making it through the gauntlet, the NA Open qualifiers, this is no joke, everybody. Ixter <laughs> God, Lukey Lukey God, you're so afraid of the man that you forced to ban out his Nickstock and Pangolier every game. How can you not have respect for these guys? They're just so strong here. <laughs> you're like, look at the friendly all chat. Whoa, whoa Lukey Lukey, Lameo? Good luck, baby girl. All right, that's more like it. Well, they did call him Ball Ball. Uh, what does that mean? Yeah, I believe in Chinese it means like I think uh, like baby kind of thing, like a term of endearment. Ah, I don't know. I'm not Chinese, but I'm pretty sure I saw that when one of uh, do you watch Dove's videos that she makes with Arteezy? No. Oh, they're adorable. She's like has him teach her like how to play core, and like she has him do her makeup and stuff. They're just like little cute fluff pieces, which are are kind of fun to watch because you can see like both of their personalities, but. I think they call each other like Bao Bao. I'm probably pronouncing that wrong too. Again, not Chinese, even though everyone seems to think I am in Twitch chat. Smile. Smile. <laughs> oh my God. Thanks Twitch chat for, you know, being very predictable. Hmm. Uh, I'm interested to see how this lane's going to go though with Luki Luki and Eggster. I think, uh, you know, I love the fact that Lena has a lot of range within the lane. I like to play the position for Lena myself. And a lot of my matches and i think it can really cause some issues uh Ooh, if you're up against there? something kind of squishy but at the same token you have a witch doctor which means you have to be very careful about your placement because not only do you have you know the cast that's going to be thrown out you also have to watch out for that maledict yep uh the maledict is going to be able to do a lot of damage that's probably what they're going to run here if um Actually, no, he's going to head to the top lane with a Juggernaut. Yeah, he'll run probably Cask and Maledict uh, regardless. He's got one clarity. He's probably not going to go for the Voodoo Restoration build. I can agree with that. Mm -hmm. and, uh, we'll see you know, if there's any action at the start of this game with the uh, the runes. You know, uh, I'm interested in seeing how exactly they uh, take team fights here. The only thing that they have that really couples with the, the Chronosphere that well is uh i guess the lich uh, chain frost so normally when people do this they have an off laner or mid uh it's able to do a bunch of damage inside the chrono alongside the faceless void but they opted not to go with that here on no pango so pretty confident with just the void by itself i feel so i want to see some sick chronos out of lies you heard the man give him his chrono spheres mm -hmm. but looks like runes are gonna get snapped up going over to the side of Infamous on the bottom lane and on the top going over to No Pango. So just a nice even split. And already you're seeing Pingu making his way back down here towards the bottom lane where he'll join up with Lies. So no attempt at first blood here in the top lane. Yeah, which is kind of boring, but I'll get over it. <laughs> uh, it's the boots first and Aegster. He'll make things less boring for me. You'll see. 
Maybe Man, all you are. Time. You sound like a dad right now, <laughs> like watching these kids play soccer or practice or something. Like, yeah, you know, coach, I wasn't super cool with that, but I, I know my boy's going to be able to deliver. <laughs> Listen, put him in center, give him MVP. He's the champ of the team. You need to understand that my son is the protagonist here. <laughs> Pika's taking a decent amount of damage. Couple of bounces though coming out here, and they do have the spin, so Luki Luki is not looking super healthy here. He's not gonna be able to run away in time, so First Blood is gonna go over towards the side of uh, No Pango, as Pika's just, or rather too uh, infamous, as Pika's has to go and heal himself up. But otherwise, feeling pretty good right now. Yeah, they punished him super hard right away. You know, regardless of how good Eikster's timing is as that uh, spin landed, he just died inside the spin. God gamer. Ran the numbers in his head. Knew exactly when he needed to drop it to land it, but not good enough right now, it seems. Excel's going to take a bunch of harass here to uh, Eikster as well. You know, this is what I was talking about at the start. You have such long range. You have okay attack damage as well in the Lina. Uh, so usually you're going to have favorable trades with the enemy offlaner. Excel's playing with the trees a decent way, though. I like it. I'm liking what I'm seeing here. Playing around back and forth, and everybody's sitting, like, very low. You're seeing some harass. The bottom lane, the mid lane especially, though. Uh, Stars, you know, holding his own fairly well here, sitting at 7-2, and 8-5 over on Faker. I do think that Stars is really going to have to uh, kind of hustle up here, because I do believe that Faker is the better mid at this time, but... And as we say that, Pepita finds a kill on Pingu. So this offlane silencer is making things happen. Yeah, you know, he's at uh, plus two already, and not bad. The, he only gets more dangerous as you feed him more kills. Yeah, you know, he's uh, right now he's gone to uh, pre-K, and he's working his way up through the system. <laughs> Eventually this boy's going to college. Gonna get that master's degree. Pingu getting stuck here in the shards again. Does try to stay alive a little bit longer. Pepita using the fairy fire. This is not looking good for him right now as Lies chasing him down. Does have the time walk if he wants to try to use it, but the frost blast coming through from Pingu will ensure that they get it. They need one more hit, and it is gonna be that DOT taking him down from Pepita, but he's not gonna get the int from that, I'm pretty sure. Nope. No, you don't get the int. Yeah. Uh, and I think that's he walked into the creep wave there to die immediately so the guy couldn't buy back and uh, take his hit from the dot. If you notice, he kind of paused as he walked in the wave. Mm -hmm. Top lane, Pekaz is taking so much damage. He does have the fairy fire and they don't have the line of sight on him. Although one final hit, is it going to be enough? This is the problem when you don't have that voodoo restoration. But Pekaz, he's still alive. He just dives deeper here into the tree line and is out of healing. Although does have a solve coming out here from Excel. Luki going a little bit deep here, using that creep wave to his advantage, trying to get the final hit off, but just not going to be able to find it. Now he's forced to back off. You know, I, I respect him going for it, but... Oh. Nothing happens there. But yeah, you start with the boots on the Dragonaut. He does an excellent job of dipping through those trees. You know, a man knows his jukes. man knows his trees, too. Ooh, double damage rune available here at the bottom spot. They'll be able to secure this for Faker. He does have the bottle online, so he'll happily refill that. Pekaz coming out over here onto Luki. Luki yet again. Pekaz trying to get off as much damage as possible with the spin. Doesn't quite manage to finish him off this time, but does enough damage to make him at least have to hide in the tree line and be careful. Yep. It's like uh, the free-to-play movie. is Stay in the trees. You know? And then the guy didn't stay in the trees. And then he died. Yep. Yep. It happens sometimes. <laughs> Big fan of that one. Let's, uh... Ooh. Faker pushing the limits, going for the Aether Remnant over here on Stars. He does have that double damage, and he's going to try to bottle his way through. Still only sitting at level 5, though. If he has a 6, that's a definitely a dead Ember Spirit with the Astral Step. And he'll just heal right back up again. Slight coming through. Feels like they want to make some moves here, but... That's uh, exactly... Five-minute runes. Oh, Stars, he's playing very far forward here. Slide off of the Aether Rub, they're coming right back in again. Faker has to be careful though, the tower coming through, the fiery fire and the burn takes him down. Very nicely played coming out here from Stars. 
Michael on the bottom lane getting bashed up now by Lies. They need a little bit more damage and they have the Frost Mask, but they opt not to use it over onto Michael. He figures that Lies is going to be able to get it, but he's not able to. It's now Pingu sitting so very low himself. They'll turn this back around. They get the kill on Faceless Point. Plus two int going over to the side of Pepito. Well, in the top lane, Luki Luki finds the kill on uh, Excel, but in... Oh my gosh, everyone's dying. Holy moly. <laughs> Welcome to the Monster Summit uh, 13, everybody, where everybody dome. dies in every <laughs> lane. You love to see it, or in some cases, you know, T-Tours for me. I'm sure our Observer's doing much better. Oh, going forward, trying to ensure. Oh, Faker, though. He's able to go. He bottles it up. Could turn back around. No, has the Astral Star. Oh, the Slight comes out from Stars as he gets the kill on Faker. Very well played here, but Michael's here with the tag team. We don't have any remnants up online. Snowball comes through as Elias finds the kill on Pepita, but Michael just clicking down stars here. Can he get there fast enough in time? It's not looking like he's going to be able to grab him. Man, just cancel out one of those bottle charges. But just not enough movement speed here on Mr. Michael. <laughs> Now, uh, Stars, you know, he gets out and gets back to base just thanks to that, uh, that rune that was still there in the bottle. He opts not to drop a fire remnant to get back the lane faster. I think, uh, you know, he had to go through all of his charges there. He's just looking to hold a couple more on him. So that is the reason that not really a misplay, just a calculation, you know. Mm -hmm. Stars, God, wouldn't make such a mistake. I have to say, he's a pretty consistent mid laner. It's been fun watching him. He's impressing you this game? Not just this game. Um, I'm talking about like just in general, like the way that he plays. Like even if his lane starts to suffer or he's having trouble trying to recover, he never goes into like the the full on like tilt feed sort of thing. Luki top lane, no, he's absolutely fine. Does have that maledict on him and took a little damage, but he's tanky enough. Yeah, it just feels like you know even when he's having a bad game, it's never like horrifically awful. Right? Like, he's able to do as much as he can with what he's given. Yeah. There was one exception, um, and I more so think that was a drafting issue than anything else. He was playing mm -hmm. a Skywrath mid up against Quincy crew, and uh, Quinn was on the Storm Spirit and absolutely bodied stars, and he oh God, just wasn't yeah. able to do anything in that game. I think uh, nerves got to him or something. He started using all his mana to take CS instead of harassing. Oh, and, no. you know, and when those cheese heroes fail in the matchup and don't win the lane, you know, you lose super hard. Man, a mid Skywrath. What year was it? <laughs> Current year. Now, the year where crazy Lens. things happen. On Faker, he's got the Astral Step, though. So he's just going to walk away, bottle through. Michael also in position to try to protect him. And again, grabs up another rune. So, you know, as you like to say, no, he gets the right rune every time. <laughs> this guy's good. <laughs> this kid is uh, pretty good. He's under some heavy harass, though. You know, Stars, he opted to max out the Slight of Fist first. Oh, they probably think he's going to base right now. No, he's not. He's made his way bottom, but he does show up over here on the creep wave, so... They know he's on his way. Pingu here, trying the best he can. Throws out that shield, but... They go drag right back in. The Chronosphere comes out, though! Oh, the Global Silence. They managed to get the plus two into over here, and now the Snowball coming through turns right back around again. Faker says he doesn't want to be here anymore. They made Aegis make that rotation down to the bottom lane, but Faker dodging back in, considering going on as well. But Stars is here to simulate coming through. Faker needs a little bit of help. He's got one Astral Step left if he wants to try to use it, but he's just going to bounce back here. So it looks like he's just going to salve and considers going back in. There's no mana left over here on Stars anymore. And on the back lines, Faker sitting very low. Michael will fall, though, as Pepita turns back around. Sass his eyes over here on Luki. These bashes, though, are real coming out from lies. As it is going to force him back. It looks like they still kind of want to make some plays here. They cancel out one of those bottle charges. Faker dropping the Aether Remnant. Was trying to see if there was anything left. Doesn't have anything to go, though, here. And they go and they throw out that uh, Corrosive Haze as he goes over and just sips away. So, hard to grab this hero, Void Spirit. He's uh, pretty fast. And they even get bottle service for him as well as the Tusk TPs over to the mid-tower. Thank you, Michael, water boy. Mm -hmm. Water boy, bring the water. Lukey, Lukey, though, taking some more damage. Man, just to sidestep that Aether Remnant, though. Stars comes back in, and Faker sitting very, very low during all of this. Looks like Pinku is man fighting over here from this tusk. He gets a big old walrus punch off. That's going to be a very dead lich. 
Pixel trying to play Ring Around the Rosie here in front of the tower. Gets one of those bashes off, does have a couple wand charges. Actually still alive after all is said and done, but the slight comes through from Stars as they find the kill. Baker dragging back in over here onto Luki. He does have the shield on him. One more hit should be enough to do the trick as Alina tries her best to get that hit, but she's not going to be able to do it. Stars coming right back in again to dissimilate. He knows, but oh, the slight coming out from Stars God as he just starts chasing down Michael. He's got that haste ran underneath his belt. Yeah, this Slardar and Ember Spirit combination is doing some serious work. You know, the bonus damage on the Slight of Fist, along with giving him vision of where the enemies are going to be, it's letting Stars get so far ahead right now. It, you, you love to see it, you know, and Stars, you know, he's winning the game enough that the lies, he can go Midas this game. It doesn't feel super awful. Uh, you know, I think his team is just going to continue to trade for kills at the moment. Pita. Right. And I mean, you hope that he's not going to look back and think it was a bad idea, but... The game is still young. I hear a lagoon on the back line, so as they take down Michael. Yeah. Um, just bounces here. Oh, this is actually so good. Luki taking too much damage here from Excel. He's gonna pop. Excel probably going to pay for this, though. But uh, it feels good when, you know, you're the position five and you get yourself a kill with your death bar, right? So. Oh, the global silence coming back in again. They want this kill over onto Stars. Are they gonna be able to grab it in time? Baker trying to find this opening. Lies his TP down to the bottom of the lane. They do manage to find the kill on Pingu, so that's another plus two int getting put over onto Pepita. Baker on the hunt. He wants stars so bad. Throws out the Aether Remnant. Doesn't manage to find him. We'll go forward with the Astral Step. TPs are coming out. Michael's also here. Stars, no mana left right now. They need to just go, and they there it is. There's the Chronosphere, and it just manages to catch Baker right on the last line here. But they go through the Walrus Punch because they finish him off. Michael gonna fall. And it looks like Stars, he's gonna survive this. Faker just getting bashed up here. He doesn't have any hope. He goes forward again. Ooh. Oh my god, Stars God. Alright, Nev. We you asked me earlier, am I impressed with this kid from just this game? And I have to say, yes, I absolutely am. They draw back over onto Papita with the LSA with the sinister gaze. And it's gonna be a kill for Extra. So you know what? Stars still alive and kicking six, one, and two. This kid is good. <laughs> he just won't stop. My God, did he ever bait them back into there. You know, and playing with his teammates so well, too. You know, they, Alina giving him the arcane boots, so he's able to get a couple more spells off. But he's playing that entire thing so close. And Infamous, they keep falling for the bait. As you do this, too, Faceless Void, he's finished up his Midas. It's been flown out to him right now. I mean, sure, Juggernaut, he's got the Mask of Madness. He's going for Battle Fury. He is at the top of the net worth. But... Now, compared to uh, how the Ember Spirit's doing, KXY Faker here, he's getting destroyed this game. I'm very impressed, like I said. You know, I feel like Faker's one of the best uh, players here in South America for mid, and Stars is just running circles around him. I'm not sure uh, if Stars had his gamer juice or what, but oh, he's stars. looking mighty good. We're not losing another game this tournament, you guys. Let's go. I'm <laughs> picking you up on my back if I have to. He's going the drums, you know, looking to play very aggressive right now. Look at the faded brooch. This guy's got so much movement speed. He's able to make some moves. Uh, the other team, though, uh, they're looking to shut him down, but I don't think he's the hero that you want to go on. You want to be hunting this faceless boy with the Midas right now. I, I do want to say, though, you know, as much as I'm uh, talking up no Pangalier right now, but Pita has had some absolutely on point global silences uh you know it's just perfect timing the last time when he saved void spirit over here when like multiple heroes got chronoed uh it was uh, the heroes were over here and they were diving the tower you know uh, he's been playing amazing silencer so far this game and really keeping infamous in this yeah you know i hate praising silencer players i hate silencer <laughs> but uh, i'll agree with you on that for sure you know he's had some really on point ultimates and he's gotten some really Decent amount of ins stolen already. I think he's got eight right now. And I imagine that's just going to continue to grow. And Faceless Void, he can't afford to be losing int. No. This is a hero that is very reliant on having that mana to be able to get off his full combo. And if he doesn't have it, that makes life exceedingly difficult for him. So. Yeah. And, uh, you know, uh, like, yeah, Time Walk, Time Dilation, Chronosphere, it's going to cost him quite a bit with the O. Oh. With the O. Oh. There, still alive here. Looks like uh, they're not going to chase after him, but they do manage to get the kill on Lie. So, pretty big deal there. And it's just like you said, Neff. Spin in the top lane. Pakaz trying to run away. Excel rejoining here. Does have the cask up if they get together, but not when they just stun lock him like this. Uh oh. 
Kaz trying to run away from stars now. He does have the healing ward and immediately gets taken down. Might have to go for the spin TP play, and it looks like he's going to be able to make it out, but not what he wanted to do there at all. No, I mean, uh, being forced to back off, you are going to farm, you know, you're at the top of the net with charts still, you almost have your battle fury, but uh, taking control of this map, they have your mid tower, uh, they're grabbing your top tower right now, stars, if he's not getting kills, he is slowing down, he only has 60 CS, meanwhile, like, you know, Iker, he's also struggling, but not that far behind him, uh, despite having, like, way more deaths than him. The net worth advantage isn't massive. Uh, it all comes down to, I guess, like who catches out the enemy safely and carry more. You know, it, is Faceless 4 going to make super good chrono plays happen, or is Juggernaut just going to continue to farm with a Battle Fury Mask of Madness? Cell coming through might be able to save him here. Oh, nicely done coming out from Stars. Excel went dropping that Death Ward, but he immediately just remnants out. And like, uh, like Gwen said, it's just about pressing those buttons. LSA connects over here onto Faker. They'll follow up Laguna Blade and Chronosphere to just take him down. See you later. Yeah, Chronosphere feels. Oh, a couple of these nice bounces, though, coming out from Excel, but he doesn't have his ultimate. Look at these. It's actually a miniature little ravage going on on the back lines. A man to go. They take down Aegster. The draw forward here coming out from Pinku as he gets the ultimate off, but it's not enough as Pakaz cleans himself up a nice kill. Leaky Leaky, though, diving behind here with the faceless void, manages to take down Pepita. Considering going back in and look at the star seeing Excel back here. He's gonna just throw out the remnant, try to run away, and now Pakaz, he's left alone. He's gonna have to TP spin out again. Although they decide to go in and they fight because Michael joining in has that snowball jumping forward again. Faker, are they gonna be able to hold him into place long enough to get this kill? Yes, they are. They find the kill over onto the faceless void. And the bash is coming out though. Pakaz, he is gonna fall. So they managed to take out the core, but they'll also lose their own as now Michael will be next to fall. It's a triple kill now for Stars as Faker. Running for his life, doesn't have any of these astral steps left. Just drop the Aether Remnant though. Luki going back in. It's one of those creeps just for good measure. They do have vision over here on Stars and they'll use the Global Silence. They want to get this kill and it looks like they're going to be able to clean up on Luki Luki. Not going to be enough to take down Stars though at this time. Yeah. We'll get them away and force Ember back. You know, a kill on him is pretty big for you right now, but, you know, you got to take what you can get right now as they push further into your side of the map. I don't... Oh, I thought Stars was going to go back in there for a moment, but, uh, you know, they, they keep playing so far forward. I feel like the Chronosphere might have been, like, a little bit prematurely thrown off uh, during that first death of the Void Spirit, uh, but he did have two Astro Steps, so it's really hard to say, but... I think if they were still holding it, then they would have been able to take that fight a little bit in a better way. But these teams have a very big ultimates. Man, I love the way that uh, Stars just started running up a Pita and people just nope, 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 four steps away. <laughs> thing to do with that, that's for sure. He's almost got his, uh, what is it, Dragon Lance. He's going to build a Hurricane Pike as quickly as possible because he's worried about these people getting on top of him. And he does need to hold the back line. You know, if you're playing Silencer, I always say the difference between a good Silencer player and a bad one is whether or not they're, they hold buyback. Because if they jump on you, you just uh, buyback and global silence immediately and punish the enemy team. But when you're playing it in the core role, uh, you tend to want to spend your money, you know, especially earlier on so you can build these next items and farm. You need to be a hero doing damage. So items to help him survive and get the enemies off him, like the Dragonlance, uh, is definitely the way to go here for Pepita. It's like Good. they want to set up over on Stars here in this mid lane, but you can definitely sniff out that there's a gank coming, so... We will immediately run that away. And I guess the thing that does concern me a little bit is Pakaz is currently leading in net worth, right? 10k net worth on this Juggernaut. Um, whenever this Chronosphere isn't up, he can definitely make some plays with the rest of the team, although the way that Nopango is playing... Yeah, that's a dead for cause. Beautifully chained up spells there, you know, uh, drops the electric ray maybe a little bit early, but you know, Michael? just using everything on him. Oh, he's gonna punish Pingu for trying to dig holes in his jungle here, although they get a really nice chain frost bounce back and forth between all these heroes. And they're taking a lot of damage, but you know what? It's worth it. They managed to go get the kill over onto Stars, and comes the Faceless Void again. Nice LSA lands over onto Faker. They'll turn back around. Pepita will fall now as Excel slowly gets clicked down. And soon, it's a team wipe. 
everybody going down. You know, you did manage to get stars finally. You know, him paying the price for not going any defensive items. In fact, immediately after he dies, he, he buys out this Yule Scepter, so he's able to deal with that global science. And I think he understands you know, how important he is to this game. So smart move by him to have, uh, continuing to go for that Desolator. Uh, would have been nice if he grabbed that before he died, but you know, your whole team, uh, your team managed to get the wipe on the enemies there. And they went up like, what was this, like, uh, three, or sorry, almost 4,000 net worth and like two, 3,000 gold because they wiped out Infamous there. So his death wasn't in vain, but this time uh, he's approaching the enemy team with a little bit more foresight in this Yule Scepter. I will say too, you know, we talked about just the, the positioning coming out and whatnot, but that was a beautiful chain frost coming out from Pingu. Like it hit so many times and because they were so desperate to get the kill on uh, on stars there, they all just face tanked it. And it really did turn around, you know, a lot of that fight and everything out of damage that was able to get pumped too. Pingu is the future. Boxes. Oh. Oh my bad. Uh, look, I heard the ceiling chains go off, and I immediately thought there was a team fight, and uh, you know, perked my eyes up and tried to find it, but he was just using it on the creep wave. Yep. Stars just farming out. Yeah. I mean, the juggernaut is going to out farm them you know, if they both leave each other alone. Given the fact that he has the mask of madness and the bath fury, and his hero just you know like clears through waves really quickly, thanks to its little base attack time and everything like that. But no Pangalia, they've just been continuing to bring the herd to infamous. This is NA Dota, SA Dota, and it's finest. It's a bloodbath. This game. Absolutely is. Smoke though over here on the side of Infamous. They want the jump again here over onto Stars. They're tired of his nonsense. They don't want him getting in the way. Are they going to be able to do enough? And yes, they even go and use the Global Silence. So that's going to be one dead Stars. But they use quite a few ultimates just to take him down. It's got to be worth it though. I mean, keep in mind, this is the guy that's setting up basically every play for his uh -oh. team. That's a, uh, looking like a dead Michael. Got the snowball, though. And they immediately ping out. They're like, we know exactly which creep camp's going. Oh, but the blink out! Michael, God! Don't do it, Lies. They have the high oh. ground. Don't do it! You're gonna water rock into a trap! Michael's still dead here. Okay. But he didn't go high ground, yeah. you know? Yeah. They stuck around. This is true. Lies has the chronosphere, too. Excel looks like he's just gonna... TP out. They cancel out the TP coming from the uh, void as well. They decide, no, we don't want to fight this. Baker's courier gets taken down, though. What was on that? Was it just returning home? I think so. I did miss that, unfortunately. Uh, I think it was just returning home. He's got a... I think it had a TP on it, maybe, actually. Yeah. Now he's got no town portal scrolls. Rookie mistake there. He's gonna probably gonna have to... to buy in bulk, man. Yeah, he's gonna have to walk back, visible. probably. I wanted to get some. Force his ally to bring him some. Ah, this so. is interesting. They have a, uh, they're getting a blink dagger on the silencer as the next item. I like it. I like the positioning. You know, uh, I think he's just worried about them just jumping at him right away at the start of these team fights, and that way you're able to get back. Like I said, you know, you're playing a, a support silencer, you save five at gold. If you're playing core, you need items uh, so you can have an impact in these team fights. You are like uh, one of the big DPS things coming out from the team. Vita has been playing an amazing game though. His global senses have been on point. Mm -hmm. Even that uh, one on the Ember Spear mid, where it seemed kind of unnecessary. You know, you have to be sure. Baker, drawing back stars. He goes, he pops that illusion room just in case. But now Pepita, he needs that help, and he just doesn't have it. He's gonna get taken down, and that's a dead Pepita. Michael also now with corrosive haze. He cannot hide here. He's gonna try to run away. He has a snowball, buys a little bit more time. I think his courier gets killed, but again, look at this guy. He's got dancing shoes on. He's that snowball, blinks away. Easy peasy. See you later, nerds. <sighs> this guy, he's just too good. Michael on the he's tusk. He's too powerful. Yeah. Uh, that's why they're letting him hold on to his Imclaw, you know, the plus 24 damage <laughs> item. Normally that goes to your uh, your mid or your save plane player. Nah, well, we'll give it to you, Michael. You're doing a great job. <laughs> He can have it as a little treat. Mm -hmm. I mean, Faker seems pretty happy with the clumsy net, so... Like, that's fine here. Maybe they can get a kill over on this Lena. Oh, the life strike array just lands on Faker at the last second. She's got herself that Yules here. Dragon Slave drawing right back here. Tingu. Oh, Faker, you just went too far, my friend. He's the Laguna, and there's a whole ultimate getting used over here onto stars, and it's just not going to be enough damage here. So he tries to run away, tries to get the courier on his way out, but 
not going to be able to. I think he also tried to TP you there. Yeah, it's on cooldown, in fact. Uh, wasted 90 gold. But, you know, when you got the Philosopher's Stone, when you got Hand of Midas on your Witch Doctor, it's money in the bank. It ain't no thing. Ain't no thing. Alright, let's see. Lies has a Chronosphere back up again. He's found Pekaz. I feel like Pekaz, even though he's gotten a great farm, he's just not doing anything. Oh, he tried to go for the Snowball Blade! He's not able to do it! Aegis gets reclaimed here. Pekaz goes down. Michael's down, too. Just nothing that can be done about that one, I suppose. And this brings uh, Luki Luki even closer to his egg and him scepter. He's only 100 gold away from it now. This is uh, this is just too good. You know, no Pangalier, they're having such a good game here. No. They really are. Stars, you know, everywhere he needs to be setting up so many plays. And whenever they want to go on him, they have to commit so much. Oh, the draw in from Pingu. Stars get a couple of these lights off. Do you have to be careful though, because Excel's standing nearby. He actually, oh, Excel went for a Midas. Luki. They're getting the full duration ultimate off over here, friend, but I don't know. Yeah, they managed to man that Maledict. He's about to pop. They're not careful. Those managed to get that shield off, but one more tick. There he goes. Down goes Luki. Just too far forward, didn't have his egg and him scepter yet. You know, if he did, he had the status resistance to get the bonus HP regen, he might have been fine, you know, creating a puddle and just uh, sitting in and either trying to run if away. They, if they can get this kill on face this void, that's huge. The draw back here, they need to stun lock him, and it looks like they'll be able to get the kill on Lies. A little bit more in going over to our Pepita here. Yep. He's a smart little potato, that one. Absolutely. He is 100% uh, stun lock there. He had the BKB, 10 seconds, never a chance to pop it as they went on him. Nice chain stunning there by them. Michael's out for blood. Sure. Faker's out for blood. Michael's out for blood. Everywhere. It looks like Pingu is going to be the sacrificial lamb. He's got the glimmer cape, but he's going to get stunned up, and it just doesn't even matter. No detection required there. Finally, uh, you know, getting onto the map, getting a couple of kills right now. And infamous, you know, win probability, gold, XP, all going back in their favor right now. And they really desperately need kills, you know, especially right now, just after Faces Void finishes his BKB is a funny time for it, though. Uh, I thought, like, this would be the period where uh, no Pangalia, they'd group up, they'd start pushing, and uh, they'd get you in fights. But you just kept taking them by surprise here. They're playing their lineup uh, pretty well right now. In fact, Silencer hasn't had to use his ultimate for any of these either. So he's still hanging on to that for this next team fight. Chronosphere is just about up, and uh, you know, no Pangalia, they're going to be uh, pretty angry with the fact that they've beaten them into the ground here. So he's going to be looking for a play. Look at that. You can see. Runs right past the ancient camp. This is a man with a mission. Yeah, the mission was <laughs> to use his Midas, though. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? We hate to see a passive Midas. Yep. I mean, none of that in these games. No. But they are grouped up. It looks like we've got a smoke online for Pingu, so... Like Stars is gonna just push out the bottom wave and then rejoin the rest of his team. Perhaps be that bait. Yep. Because it is uh, making their way over here. Agnum Scepter picked up now for Doug. There's the initiation over on the Papita, but he's got that four staff. Snowball's gonna come through. There's a big old Laguna Blade. And there it is. There's the Chrono. There's not gonna be any sort of ultimate here coming out from the silencers. They take down Michael next, but they'll turn back around again. Lies, he just face tanks the entirety of that ultimate coming out from Juggernaut. Now, Luki Luki, he's got himself a little puddle here, but I don't know. This is not looking good for him. It feels like he's a little fish in this pond as they just slice him down. They bought back on the silencer for this as well. And just like that, oof, that is rough. Yeah, uh, the fight's definitely going their way now. It feels like uh, Stars, uh, he just doesn't have the damage anymore to blow these people up. They're doing an amazing job earlier, just constantly taking fights with enemies. And I think one of the issues is they're not getting these drawn out fights and they keep getting the drop on them on uh, Infamous. In Roshan now, in fact, that's Aegis and Cheese. It's gonna be a little bit rough. Uh, I, I don't know. I still think that uh, no Pangalier, they, they got this one. But at the moment, uh, some of this coordination there, like uh, some of their map control is uh, questionable as far as where they're standing and whatnot. Luki Luki's jumped too far forward a couple times too, and that's cost them quite a bit. 
Well, hopefully, you know, they can get their footing back. But you have to be careful, you know. Too many of these fights going the wrong way will really just give away that advantage. Hmm? And you don't want that to happen. Well, Silencer's got the sheep stick queued up next and, and that is huge that will shut down the ember spirit so hard uh, and he's got uh, not a great stack for a big deal he'll just get blown up and taken out of these fights especially with under a swift slash not good not good at all I want it sounds like a pokemon yeah <laughs> swift slash i think it's sand slash right mm -hmm. and then there's yeah. ages slash which is another one. Oh, is there yeah it's, it's actually just like a sword. <laughs> wow, they really got lazy with that, huh, Pokemon? <laughs> it's just a sword. Grief. <laughs> Uh-oh, Lukey. Uh, no, looks like they're not too, too interested. We're chasing after that courier, but it does only belong to Pingu, so. Look at Picasso. He's, like, racing over here. This is a very scary juggernaut. So scary, he's keeping his basher in his backpack. No. I don't know about that one. I'm not convinced. I guess he, he's more worried about uh, farm speed, so he's got the Mask of Madness in there. Uh, I'm not crazy about putting your Bash or your Backpack at any given point, though. But, you know, Lifesteal, Farming Speed, put him in there for that. Maybe a question mark? Okay. Definitely a question mark, but uh, this tower is getting chonked away here. I'll go. They'll throw up the Healing Ward. They need to wait for the next Creep Wave. And look at this play that coming out from Panga. They're going to try to get the Pincer move on him, but uh, they'll find Faker. So it looks like Global Silence comes out. Is it going to be enough to save him? No, they still managed to get the LSA off because they have a Lotus Orb over on Aixer. And that's looking like a Courier is going to get taken down next. Lies looking for this opportunity, but everyone is already pretty much left at this point. Excel still trying to TP out. Looks like he's not going to get found in time. So everyone's run away here. Because might be a little bit greedy as there's going to be the Remnant coming forward and Stars throwing out that Yule's going to try to jump after him here, but... I don't know, he's thinking like he wants to go in. He still has an Aegis, he could go for the Omni Slash. In fact, Star's going to tank a decent chunk of it as he runs away. Michael looking for the opening, Lies goes in though. He's got the Chronosphere and it looks like he's going to be able to go burn down the Aegis. Going to get the kill on Michael as well. The question is, can they take down Pekaz again? And it's looking like they're going to be able to. They have too much damage. The spin comes out, they need one more hit. And there it is, Lies gets himself a double kill. Beautiful Chrono at the end, that's what we were waiting for. You know, Silencer, I think he wasted that Global Silence for the Disengage, so he's not able to save them from the follow-up from the Chronosphere, and that's all it took, but they're not done. They are not done indeed as Sluki runs all the way into the base <laughs> just to get poor MJC. No, he's tried this green. before, but he finally pulled it off, you know? A couple yeah, times with all just... the other heroes dead, that's the time when you can go that far, Luki. <laughs> A god gamer Luke. You know, he's uh, limit that, testing right now. That's what we call it, right? That's the that rascal term. Lucas. Technical term. What will we do with him? <laughs> and this is going to open up the uh, base here at 33 minutes. They're just going to be able to take a tower. They're going to be able to take the racks. I'm not sure if they'll go for anything beyond this, though. I think they do need to be a little bit careful. But it looks like Luki's hungry. He wants this tower. He's going to have the rest of the team come and join him. And they definitely have the damage to be able to take this down. So it's going to be another tower, possibly some more racks, because it's still 27 seconds before Jug's up and running again. Yep. Where are you now, no Pangalier haters? You doubt them as they come into this tournament. People say, do they really deserve to be here? These other teams would have been way better. Could they have taken a game off of Cat Hammers? Could they be doing this to Infamous right now? I don't think so. Look at them go. BKB almost finished on the Slardar. Rashawn up, or maybe spot another three minutes now, so that one's not going to be an objective for them. They have to worry about, you know, they don't have to play around that Roche pit. They just get to wait for the next Chronosphere here. Things are looking good for them right now. They are indeed, but I'm also worried that, you know, possibly Infamous, they're going to see the fact that they don't have that Chronosphere, and they might try to make some plays. Casually Omni slashing that, or not Omni slashing, sorry, we have the Ags, the Swift Slash. Because they're looking for him, they'll hold him into place, they're going to follow up immediately because see Faker jumping forward. Trying to bait a little bit, but BKB now getting picked up for Luki. That's actually huge. Very, very important for him to be able to just not get locked down and swim between his puddles. These uh, cast have been doing a lot of work from the Witch Doctor. You know, the Global Science have been pretty on point. Uh, once you take those out of the equation for Luki, Luki, he's just able to stay on top of the Juggernaut and burst him down. I mean, that's his target, you know? He gets so much armor from sitting inside these puddles. 
12 bonus river armor, 40% status resistance, 35 regen. It's a fair amount. I would also like to point out, though, too, the Scythe of Ice is completed now, Peta. Uh, <laughs> that's going to be an issue. That is indeed going to be an issue. If they can manage to catch Faceless Void or uh, Ember Spear with that at the start of a team fight and blow them up, you know, there is no way that they're able to take this. Juggernaut, you know, he's getting bigger and bigger. He's Witch becoming... Doctor? Excel finding him immediately. Turns around with the BKB and he goes in for the Chronosphere. Be able to immediately take down Michael. He's going to be able to immediately take down Excel. And look at this. The rest of the team says, nope, 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 nope. Better them than us. <laughs> but you know what? That is a BKB and a Chronosphere down. Yeah, they've got buyback on the Witch Doctor, but not the Tusk, unfortunately. And that was the exact uh, target that he needed to, to take down first. The Tusk, you know, bring him down, stop any snowball saves from coming out on the other one, then go on the Witch Doctor afterwards. Well, they'll find Luki here, and that's going to be the reveal of that sheep stick. The drag back over onto Luki. He's got the BKB, and in comes Stars. He's going to be able to just turn it back around. They get the kill on Pepita. And not enough damage to take down Luki. Not I... fast enough. I hate to say it, Moxie, but that might be it. Pingu, he commits the Chain Frost to the Creep Wave to push it out. This man is a... I was... No, you know what? It didn't even matter. I was going to say he's a genius and he's pushing it out faster, but he's really not there. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Pingu, let me inside your head. I want to understand your secrets. Why did you do that? You don't that? ever want to go inside the mind of an NA Dota player. <laughs> Come on now, Nuff. Let's be real honest in there. <laughs> There's some weird shit going on in a lot of these guys' heads. But, you know, they know Silence is dead. Uh, his buyback was on cooldown when he died. Uh, at this point, he doesn't have money for buyback. Uh, I'm not sure that uh, they know this on No Pangolier, but given, like, the stress that they're putting into this push right here, uh, they are pretty certain that he can't get back up. So, you know? Take this last set of racks while you have the chance. Don't give them time to recover. No fortify available now either. Oh my god, Picasso just being so far forward. But the follow up here from Michael is going to try to turn it back around again. There's the snowball. We'll drag right back over here onto Stars. They're trying to just finish him off. The Swift Slash makes it so he's going to be able to maybe get enough. And they go and use the Omni Slash, but it's just not quite enough damage. Are they going to be able to get the kill on Ice? Yes, they do. Picasso sitting very, very low. The buyback now coming out from Michael Pingu. He's looking for this opening, but he's not going to be able to go and grab Picasso fast enough. He's already just vacated off the side here. So they'll turn back around over onto Faker. Faker will go down. He immediately buys back. Another snowball coming out over here onto Pingu. As Michael tries to find an opening, but he is also slain. As Lies tells the team, get back. Luki doesn't seem like he wants to, though. He wants to continue to fight his Faker. He did buy back, dragging back over onto Luki. They need to be careful. They do have that Swift Slash as they go. And they take down Luki. Luki, they could be able to take down Stars here as well. Except he does have the Lotus Orb. He's going to be able to stay alive a little bit longer because still looking for the opening. Pingu is going to just go use that Ghost Scepter. And this is a hot chase here, but they just don't have it. Stars is just too hard to get a handle on. Uh, they keep going. It, uh, the Aether Emma doesn't connect and he's out. Luki Luki, you know, sitting a little bit too far forward. Uh, this be the uh, phrase of the day for Luki. Yeah, you know, the guy has no chill, Moxie, but he died <laughs> with his hand of Midas. Oh, oh, look at this off cooldown. Amateur move by him. You know, you can't even validate your mistake is like, oh, I used my Midas. I'm dead. It doesn't matter. I'm making space for my team now. Now you just look embarrassed in front of the, the viewers. Anyways, pressure shark. Especially when someone like Neff points it out to everybody. <laughs> Smile. Smile? Uh, let's talk Roshan though. You know, you're forced to buy back now on Luki. Uh, the objective is here. The refresher shard could be huge for either one of these teams. You know, both of them are going to play around the pit right now, I feel. There's no, the, the, the next big battle is definitely taking place outside this pit or in the pit depending but it's definitely scary although lies went bottom mm -hmm. if they went and they tried to make a play right now they might be able to take it without the faceless void being there he's make he's inching his way over to the top though he just he saw those creeps and he just couldn't say no <laughs> sometimes See, because you went to that temptation it's like me with uh ice cream <laughs> you do like your dairy. Courier sitting up there. They see that they're in the pit. How do you approach this, though? We'll throw out some shards, try to push it back a little bit. 
They need to get in there if they want to get this done, though. So, okay, there's a step four. They get a couple of these heads over onto the side. The BKB coming out from Luki immediately followed up with the Chronosphere. We'll be able to go and hold Picasso into place, and they have their own BKBs up and running. This is not looking good for Picasso. He has to go. He manages to go. Gets off the ultimate as he starts sliding around like crazy here. They manage to go and take down Michael. Picasso being held into place. This Roshan sitting incredibly low right now. They'll go back in again. Lies looking for this opening. They go to get the bash off, and he's going to get a couple of these nice hits. Lotus Orb will come out. They're flirting back and forth with one another outside the pit. They are missing Michael. That was a terrible chain process. They go jumping right back in again. It's still going to be the Dire picks it up. And Picasso grabs up the Aegis. He's going to fall here, but they managed to get the kill over onto Lies. Exter getting himself a double kill, but now in comes Picasso again. They'll be able to go take down Luki Luki, but not before he goes and gets himself his own kill. Buyback comes out now from Stars. He's not happy about this. But everyone else on the side of Infamous went down during that fight. Yeah, they're not going to be able to take anything off for this. So the real winners of this one is no Pangalia. They got the cheese. They got the refresher shard. You know, uh, I'm surprised they were able to take that fight into the pit there. They just don't have the damage to finish off Octus. Every time uh, they try to initiate on him, they bring him pretty low. But he gets the Omni Slash off. He gets the Swift Slash off afterwards. And they just can't lock him down long enough for him to be killed. Uh, he's uh, really come online at this point. Uh, he is the number one target that they need to bring down. I feel like uh, barely anybody else matters on Infinite at the moment. He is doing all of the damage in these team fights. Fortunately, you know, this game might have been over right now. You did buy out on uh, Lies before he went down there. I do think it was the correct move, though. Uh, he's going to be able to disassemble this Mask of Madness into a Satanic and take this next fight here. Um, and again, he didn't need to buy back there. His team managed to win the fight uh, enough with just his uh, one life. Yeah, fight there. I'm, uh, I'm pretty nervous for Infamous here. I mean, they've been taking these fights, Moxie, but... Uh, they're not... winning them. Not even winning them. Like, they're surviving them by a hair, and they're making enough happen out of them, but still... Mm -hmm. We might, like, uh, just see this keep going in the 8-slot Juggernaut. It really depends on how they use their Refresher Shard on No Pangalier. I mean, if you get that double Chronosphere off, uh, it could be very big. Unfortunately, you don't have the plus 140 Chronosphere AoE talent. Uh, so, you know, the option is still there from Tusk to just be able to save you with the Snowball. If you have the bigger Chronosphere, it's a little bit harder to do. There. All right, what's the play here, Infamous? You going for a smoke? They're grouped up. Mm -hmm. I, think oh, I they... do like this. They have the Whitless Shaco on um, on Silencer. I'm gonna take him up, make it more difficult for them to blow him up in the future. Yep. Very necessary. They have a decent amount of armor at level 24 as well. Hey, actually, if they get 25 talent on Silencer, they're laughing. It's got she's actually got a 30% cooldown reduction. Uh, your global silence goes down to 70 seconds. So no one's having fun at all. Yeah. Cool. Good hero. Love this guy. Woo. <laughs> Spring break. All right. Smoke into smoke. No Pango sitting on the top lane here. They know where they are. High ground. Going around. Let's see that Shiva's Faker looking for an opening. Immediately the BKB gets popped over here onto Star's Lies. Looking though, looks like he's going to be able to take down Michael very quickly. Getting a couple of these hits over here onto Pingu. There's absolutely not going to be a lich. Oh, he managed! He flips the Chrono! This is a disaster coming out here for No Pango. Is over on the side. Witch Shocker gets a couple of these nice bounces. But because he's trying to just man fight it through and they have the Laguna Blade, they'll be able to go. They take him down. This is looking very good now for No Pango as they go and they take down Picaz. They're chasing after Pepita now. He's trying to try to TP out. That was way too just trying to get out of there. No, it's a desperation move. As now they're looking, they use the refresher shard. Faker should be able to TP out, but the rest of his team is dead. They've got creeps in the base here. Juggernaut forced to buy back. Optimistic. That was the word I was thinking of when I was trying to uh, voice that. Way too optimistic of a TP when you're sitting next to a Slardar. <laughs> but tower's going down. Rax is going down. There's the other Chronosphere. If they can take Picasso out here, this could be game here enough. And Faker waiting patiently, but there's only so much that he can do. BKB coming out from Picasso. It's not enough. They go. They get the kill. That's that's gotta be it. That's gotta, that's gotta be, be game right there. And that is that's it. Game. Oh, ho, ho. where are you now, no Pangalier haters? You thought that they couldn't pull another rabbit out of their hat, but here they are taking the games off of Infamous, the second place so far in the groups. They go from five and one. Five and two here. Well, 
Moxie, uh, I'm interested in seeing your thoughts. I don't think anyone's going to be laughing after this game. You take a game off of both uh, Cat Jammers and Infamous today. Super impressive. And we've got one more game coming up still. They got to be feeling really good about this right now. I got to say, you know, again, going back to uh, just what we were discussing earlier, you know, I said, you know, Stars has really been impressing me as a mid player. You know, it seems like he's pretty consistent every game. Like even when he's having trouble, he does his best to, you know, recover. And I haven't been watching a lot of games where, you know, he's popped off this game. He absolutely popped off. He looks so good on this Ember Spirit. He went up against Faker, who again, I consider to be basically the the third best mid player SA. And he honestly, he spanked him in lane today. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if Faker's just really tired or, you know, Stars drank his gamer juice or whatever it was, but he just looked so good. And he made so much happen, made so much space as well. Lies looked very good too. Um, and you know, Luki, <laughs> we keep laughing because Luki was way too far forward a lot of the times, Limit but he testing. was, he was <laughs> in the right spot and the right time when it counted. It's usually after that engagement that he was like, you know what? No, no, no. I can get more. I can get more. And then immediately would, you know, just go a little bit too far. Uh, mm -hmm. infamous. I don't like the silencer pickup. And I felt like because even though he had a lot of farm, he wasn't taking advantage of the fact that he was ahead. Uh, I would have liked to see him be more active. I'm not sure. He just kind of AFK farmed for like a good chunk of that game. But uh, what are your thoughts here, Neff? Uh, You know, you had an amazing game for farm, but you're, it came at the cost of your team making space for you. You know, KXY, Faker in the mid lane, uh, he, you know, ended up losing to stars ultimately. You know, um, it looked like the lane was going his way. Then one kill goes in the, the way of Ember Spirit. And stars, he just completely popped off that game. You know, every opportunity he had to outplay the enemies, he did so. And they had to commit so much to him to in order to bring him down as the game went on. Uh, I think that's where everything started to go wrong. But, you know, as you were saying, you kind of went all in on the Mask of Madness and the Battlefield and the Juggernaut. Yeah, he's just going to farm. We're going to outcarry the enemies like this. But you don't outcarry Faceless Void in the super late game. You know, once that third Roshan death comes, uh, Chronosphere is going to do so much more work than an Omni Slash. And that's exactly what happened. Well, you know, I think uh, I know a lot of Luki fans and no Pango fans are going to be very excited about this, but it is, of course, a best of two series. So there's still a chance for Infamous to bounce back here. Uh, but I know a lot of people are very eager to see, you know, can they keep this hot streak running on the side of no Pango since, you know, these are their first two victories in this tournament. So we'll see, but we are going to take a short break, guys. And when we come back, we're going to have the very last game of the night. <laughs> 